Welcome, everyone. My name is Reverend Cheryl Summon Walker, and it has been just a blessing to have known Mr. Orville Lee Smith, to just have him in my life and in the life of this wonderful church and in the past church as well. So Lord, and everyone here before God, we, we celebrate his life. And we celebrate with story, and we celebrate with scripture. We celebrate with tears. We celebrate with memories. And we celebrate, most importantly, with the love that the Lord Jesus Christ has put in each and every beating heart that is sitting here today and those who have not been able to be here. As my four-year-old would say, my four-year-old granddaughter, she'd say, Grandma, is God crying because it's raining? So today, as God's tears come on down to cleanse our hearts and our souls. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, loving God, for this hour we need your mercy to soothe our grief as we are witnesses to the resurrection and witnesses to the celebration of Mr. Orville Lee Smith. We thank you for a devoted Christian, elder, husband, father, Navy, soldier, grandfather, great-grandfather, and true man of God. As Psalm 27 says, and it truly represents the man of God that we say goodbye to today, and I quote, one thing I ask of the Lord is that I will seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And on this day, and as the rain pours down, we say hallelujah and thank you for Mr. Orville Lee Smith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I didn't hear everybody over this rain, amen. 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 Thank you. And now, Dr. Bob is here to give us some rememberings of Lee's life.
I also think of his great generosity in terms of financial. He was always quick to help somebody. Somebody who needed some food, he would buy them a meal. Uh, somebody that had some other difficulty, he would quickly volunteer to help. Again, reflective of his big heart. That wasn't just limited to financial. If he had something that he wasn't using, that he thought that somebody else could use, he would use it. He would give it so that they could use it. He just spread the joy and the love he had for people wherever he was. I also think that I don't know of a single place I ever thought that I might go to, or had been, that Lee hadn't already been there. <laughs> there was a book that we would do, I think we did it on Zoom probably a year or so ago, in which we went to different national parks. And it seemed like everyone, Lee had already been there. I don't know how many times he crossed the equator. I don't know how many times he went to the North Pole. I heard of times when he was on ships that were not just like this going across the ocean, but more like this. I never thought I would live to see the day to know that there's a place that Lee had not been before. But I do know now that when it is our time to join him and the other saints throughout the ages, Lee will say hi and welcome, and I've been there. <laughs> and I've been here waiting for you. Lee, Lee's son, Mr. Tim Smith, if you don't mind, sir, coming on up, for you have a few words to say about your daddy. Thank you all for coming today. On behalf of the family, I want to thank everyone who uh, was part of my dad's life. And I want to thank Reverend Cheryl and Reverend Anderson and the United Presbyterian Church family for uh, putting together this service on such short notice. And I also want to thank um, Roger Lee Tiffany of VFW Post 1590 uh, for being here to uh, pay tribute to my dad. How many words do I need to describe my dad? Just a glance through the comments on social media following our post explained better than I could. These are words written by, these are words written by two of his grandchildren that I'll read today. From his granddaughter Rebecca. My pop up was kind, generous man, and I will miss him every day for the rest of my life. I've been blessed in knowing all four of my grandparents and will keep the memories I have made with them close to my heart, just as he kept memories of my childhood lined on the shelf of videotapes and pinned to the wall in a million picture frames, forever immortalized for others to look back on fondly. So too, I will remember his laugh, his smile, and his warm embrace. I have doubted myself many times, but never once did I doubt his love for me. It did not matter how short I cut my hair or what outrageous color I dyed it, he would still smile at me the same way he always did. He did not mock me for my strange clothes or unusual interests as others did. He was always, I was always his granddaughter and his love was completely unconditional. He is with me now as he 
is with all of us in the small moments. A soft clunk of a VHS player, the chirping of crickets on a hot floor tonight, and the warm smell of fresh black coffee, made sure that it's fresh, will bring a smile to my face. I know that he loved me with all of his heart, and that love will live on through my love for others. He wanted nothing more than his family to be happy, and I think he succeeded at that. Thank you for so, thank you so much for loving him too. These are the words of his grandson Adam. When my grandmother died, I said I was fortunate to know her as my grandmother. The same holds true for my grandfather. I was lucky to be his grandson. However, I feel anyone who knew him could count themselves lucky to have met such a unique and loving man as Oral Smith. He was kind, generous, earnest, trusting, faithful, full of humor and love for everyone he considered family, and there were many. I can only hope to be as friendly, personal, and forgiving as he was to anyone he met. There is little more I can say that would truly suffice to encapsulate what he meant to so many people. Yet there were few more words needed to generally express how I felt about him. I loved him, and he loved me. I will miss him dearly, but take heart knowing his memories will live in all the people whose lives he made brighter simply by a part of it. May he be at peace knowing how much we loved him and will continue to love him always. Adam. Thank you. My grandchildren are listening, on, his grandchildren are listening on, the, uh, on our phones right now. Orville Lee Smith, born July 9, 1933 in Franklin, Ohio, son of Jesse Smith and Mary Parrott. I would imagine life in rural central Ohio was simple by today's standards. I did not actually know my grandparents, but I am sure they did their best raising a family, farming, millwork. Education was unfortunately a low priority. My dad dropped out of high school to help on the farm. The military was a common place for many young men, whether being drafted or volunteering. It was for my dad's three brothers as it was for him. They each did their time and returned home. My dad enlisted in the Navy in 1952. He did his four years and, like the others, he returned to Franklin. Maybe there were no local girls to his liking. Maybe work in the steel mill was less attractive than life at sea. Whatever the reason, my dad made the first great decision of his life. He went back into the Navy. There he sailed around the world twice, crossed the uh, equator multiple times, crossed both the Arctic and the Antarctic circles, visited more ports than he could ever have told us about. Yeah. He, was a, he was a tin can sailor. While stationed at the Pentagon, he met and fell in love with my mother. Phyllis Brown was like him. From humble beginnings, she was from rural Freehold, New Jersey, and like him, left home to find something that home could not give her. Dad made his second great decision. He married my mother in August 1961. A year later, my sister Lauren was, uh, came around, and the year after that, I was born. My dad left for many adventures at sea while we stayed home. He made chief in 1966. My sister Belinda came along in 1968. During those years, we moved often, a new place every year, a new school, and my dad still going out to sea again. More than anything, this eight-year-old boy wanted his daddy to come home and stay, and I begged him to do it. So my dad retired from the Navy in 1972, and we moved here to Daytona Beach. He bought a house, got a regular job, we joined Highlands Presbyterian Church. He took an active role in our education, 
putting all three of us in private school. To this day, I don't know how he and mom managed it. He also found time to coach our youth sports teams, teach me carpentry and a bit of auto mechanics. Though I have to admit, I was never that good at either. I learned later, though, that he always missed his life at sea. And I regret terribly that I might have been the cause for him leaving that life too soon. Yeah. Together, Mom and Dad made a life for us better than they themselves had. And it still did us that same desire. When I came when my time came to deciding on an adult path to take, my dad was okay with the Navy. He just didn't want me to enlist. Again, he wanted better for me than he had for himself. I didn't get an appointment to the Naval Academy, so I chose Navy ROTC. My scholarship was pretty good, but my dad supported me even when there was not enough scholarship money to cover every expense of college, while at the same time paying for Laurie's education. Again, I had no idea how they, would, how they managed it. In addition to my two sisters and me, Dad had two grandsons, three granddaughters, and one very adorable great-grandson. I did a little poll on Ancestry.com and found out my dad also had five nephews and seven nieces, eight great-nephews and ten great-nieces, six great-great-nephews, twelve great-great-nieces, I'm not there, eight great-great-great-nephews and seven great-great-great-nieces. Sometimes I wonder the Smith side of the family just, just knows how to procreate. <laughs> and I'm just counting the ones on his side of the family. The nieces and nephews on my mom's side loved and cherished him too. He did his best to stay in touch and spend time, as much time as he could with them. And he was even planning his next trip to Ohio when he went to the hospital. If I could sum up my dad's life, I might Say, sure, he lacked some of the social graces that he expected me and my sisters to live by. He too often said things that were socially awkward, but he never met anyone he couldn't be friends with. He never spoke ill of anyone. And I can't recall anyone ever speaking ill of him. I might ask how he lived so long. 87 was pretty good. He actually did not follow the conventional rules of good health, eating right, exercising regularly. It truly must have been the size of his good heart. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I think your dad could do all the things that you said and the things that you know, we know he did, particularly to try to with people because he lived by these next two verses from the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And because he believed it and lived it, he could share that. Amen. Before I read Psalm 23, I see another pastor out here Dr. Reverend Laura, she is in the house today, 
and Sir Lee knew her well. Madam, do you have anything that you would like to say before we get started? Absolutely, I can say amen to that. We always make sure that uh, if there are other pastors out there that I don't know of, please raise your hand. Hearing none, I will continue. We knew this one backwards and forwards. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <sighs> Sir Orville Lee Smith. Sir Lee always spoke his mind frankly. You all have a legacy to keep up. I'm not sure how many of y'all speak your mind, frankly, but if you do, you got the Lee gene. For example, these are some things that Sir Lee would say to me on the way out from church in his little red scooter that matched his red truck. By the way, somebody get that red truck? No. Okay. Where's that? Okay. Bring it by the church. I miss it. And I quote, I need to talk to you, end quote, which meant he was coming by my office to say something about maybe something that I did. And basically, he just wanted to hear what was the reason I did it. And of course, if it was in order, decency and in order. Number two, now he's on his scooter, and he's scooting out, and he's going to the breakfast group. Is there any of the breakfast group people here? Yep, they're here. Some of them raise their hand. He's going to the breakfast group, and before he goes out, I don't know if y'all remember, there was a gentleman that was, uh, his life was taken by the name of Floyd, and that weekend I had a sign that I was preaching, Black Lives Matter. Well, on his way out, he says, I don't like Black Lives Matter. And I said, well, Lee, is it that you don't care about black lives, or is it that you understand Black Lives Matter organization to be violent? Well, violent, of course. So I said, stop on by. And we had a conversation. And that was OK. The other thing that he said, but we can talk about it, and we'll work it out. And we did. We came, him and I came to an understanding. Neither one of us like violence. 
And because we neither one of us liked violence, we saw face to face on that particular subject. Another Sunday, that better be Jesus, Bob. On another Sunday, I have a, a daughter. She is not here today because she really likes Mr. Lee, but she is a nurse, so she's working uh, the OR this weekend. And her and her husband, who is also a Navy man, normally sit up against that wall with a bunch of kids, my grandbabies. Well, she came in, of course, late to church. And Lee was sitting right back there. And he saw her, and then this was back in the day where we used to have lots of refreshments over here before COVID. And he rolled up to me in his car, and I was standing next to my son-in-law, and Lee said to me, loud enough for him to hear it, if I were a few years younger, I'd give you a run for my money. She's pretty. <laughs> so, who said that he might say some things? You are right. But let me say this. Lee does have the biggest heart ever. Because when my youngest was getting married in Virginia, I had to have somebody sign a notary letter that said that I was in good compliance with my church. And I called Sir Lee. And he got from his house with his red scooter and his red truck to Wells Fargo and signed the letter in front of the notary. You talk about somebody that had to do more than normal. Most of us just got to put our shoes on. That man had to put, make sure that that scooter was there, onto the truck drive to the place, bring it down, get in the scooter, get in the bank, and sign. My daughter said to me now, not normal people do that. And I said, Sir Lee is not normal. He's got the biggest heart ever. And all of you folks that are related, raise your hand if you're related to that man. You must have a legacy of big hearts. Because this is what legacy is about. It's about being a Christian human being. This man took his religion and lived his life as an example to all of us. And it was always an honor to know him as imperfect as some of his sayings are, but he was always willing to listen and to talk and to work things out. Isn't that all that we can ask of ourselves? Whether we are on one side or the other, love is the most important thing. So all of us that had the opportunity to know this man, Imperfect, funny, smiling, and the last time I saw him was, was that Friday, Tim? Last Friday? Mm -hmm. I got a, received a call or a little text that he wasn't doing well. Is that me? Let's move it out. He wasn't doing well. So I got in my car and I went over to Indigo. And I walked in the room and his eyes were open. And he was able to hold hands. And I said, Lee, I'm here. You okay? And he wasn't able to quite communicate. But his eyes looked right at me. 
and he could still squeeze your hand, yes or no, he could respond that way. And so, of course, you, as a chaplain, we go over and we take a hand or put a hand on the bed, on the person in the bed, and we'll say a prayer. And I said, Lee, would you like a prayer? And he could do that. After the prayer, and during the prayer, I didn't realize because my eyes are closed, Lee's eyes were open. Lee's eyes were open. And for the first time, it's almost like he could see me and others for who they were. He was gracious with his eyes. He knew that he was getting ready to see his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was ready. He was calm. And my eyes were filled with tears. Because as human beings, we want everybody here, don't we? We want them here forever. 87 years, 97 years, 102 years, it doesn't matter. But let me tell you something. Those tears that we shed, and as my grandbaby said, the tears that were shed out there really hard. God's tears. That's a witness and a testimony to who we are in Christ. His eyes. I will never forget them. I wrote today about him at 5 a.m. in the morning. And of course, the tears ran. I will miss him. You will miss him. But I'm telling you, if there's not somebody over here in this family that doesn't speak their mind, anybody, anybody speak their minds besides the gentleman there? Look, nobody wants to say, I'm kicking my hand down. Speak your mind in peace and in love. Lee's right. You don't have to like everything. You can speak your mind, but you can also talk to people and find out what's in their mind and their hearts. That's the legacy. That's the witness. That is how Jesus has worked in that man's life. And now it's going to be working in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. amen. And amen. Amen. And now, I invite you to bow your heads. I don't know if you noticed, but the title of this Sunday's sermon is called Zeal for Your House Will Consume Me. One of the things that Lee used to say to me all the time was, you can't break me away from church. I will come to church no matter what. Well, he's in the greatest church ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, may we all go in peace and ready to speak our minds in the face of injustice and justice and always be ready to talk. I hope that's Jesus again. Always be ready to talk. Always be ready to commune with one another. To always be ready to walk holding hands and to know who you are. As we leave this place, we are grateful 
for your spirit, for Lee's spirit, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lee was in the Navy. How many years? 20. 20 years. Sir? more than honored to be here. When you called me yesterday, I didn't know your father, but I've known your father for years. I didn't recognize the name because I've had three strokes in the last four years, and some of my memory has woefully gone. Uh, but we were in the VFW together. I was chaplain for 12 years. And I was working with the Junior ROTC. And they didn't have enough money to take all the kids over to McNeil Air Force Base. <coughs> I was trying to raise the money. He came up to me and said, don't worry about it. And he gave enough money to take all of the kids and told me to never say where the money came from. I break that. This is the ceremony that is given to Navy personnel, Marines, Coast Guard, and anyone who served at sea is entitled to the two bell ceremony. And it gives me great privilege. I didn't think to ask you about Army. So I called you back and said, because I started getting an inkling that this is the man that was in the Navy. And I think I know him, but I didn't know him in the world. That's all right. <laughs>
Let us who gather here not forget our obligations. And in silence breathe a prayer for our absent children. Each in his own words, each in his own way. Bow our heads and let us pray. Or a silent prayer for a departed shipmate. They are now serving on the staff of the Supreme Commander. This moment of reverence we dedicate to the memory of our fallen comrades on this day. soldier that dies that I hear about, I play taps for them, and let it be remembered that the, or in our lifetime, we heard the greatest taps of all for a, another Navy man, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. On this Google, it's captured a chip. And uh, I don't know how they describe it. It's a computerized chip that has that taps placed on it. And I can push a button and I can play that. <laughs> uh, but this here is out of respect for all of our veterans. And it's part of Googles across the country. But we are assembled to pay a lasting respect to our departed comrades. And the call of our country to turn, lead, answer, said what's forgotten in the cause of the greater good. As the brave man he marched away with the United States and its God, its country, and its flag. The red of our country's flag is made better still. The white, more stunnelessly pure by the motives which impelled it. In the starry field of our nation's glorious banner, the blue has been glorified with service he has given to American ideals. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God and Father of all. Of our sorrow, we realize the truth. That though we die, we shall live again in the shelter of your love. As comrade after comrade departs this life, we march on with our ranks growing thin. Help us to be faithful to you and to one another. We ask that you would look in mercy upon all of us here assembled, mm -hmm. and with your compassion and tenderness, and souls that come to those that reach by the hand of death. Give them the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise. Of heaviness. Heavenly Father, bless our nation with freedom, peace, and righteousness. And through your sovereign and Holy Spirit's favor, may we all meet at last before your throne of grace in heaven. And to your great name shall be praised forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
United States Navy, through the Pentagon, in concurrence with the President of the United States, the Supreme Court, and the Congress of the United States, it's an honor to present you this flag, your father's flag, which he fought for and served for. our part of the program. May you go in peace. May you go in goodwill and laughter. May you find mercy in this place will never be the same without Sir Lee. But I want you to know his spirit, his honesty, his willingness, his open heart is in all of us. And we're all better because we need him. Amen? Amen. 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 And amen. 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 And now what we're going to do is let the Family go outside first. It's not raining. The sun is out. And you may please give all of your condolences and well wishes to the family outside. Okay.